Before starting this lesson, please take out this handout and follow along. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about solving proportions. So a proportion is when you have two fractions equal to each other. And oftentimes, you are missing one of the numbers. So you don't know what this value is, and you need to figure out what it is. There's basically three ways you can solve proportions. So I'm going to show you three different methods of solving proportions, but really use the method you are most comfortable with. There's not one way to do this. You just find the way that works for you. So the first method is called comparison. You're going to compare two given numbers in the proportion and decide what you need to multiply or divide by to go from one to the other. Use the same number to multiply or divide to get the unknown. So what I mean is, if I compare the two numerators, the top numbers, I can look at this and I can think to myself, okay, what do I multiply this by to get this? Well, 10 times 3 gets me 30. And now that multiplying pattern for the top numbers will be the same for the bottom numbers. So I just continue the pattern, x is equal to 55 times 3, which gives me a final answer of x equals 165. So I can do the same thing over here, except now we're going kind of backwards because x is on the left-hand side, so we have to think, okay, when I go from here to here, what do I do? Well, it's not as clear because it's not a nice whole number. 15 times something gets me 22. Well, 15 times 2 is 30, so we must be multiplying by something less than 2. How do we figure out what that multiplying pattern is? We can always work backwards. If we don't know what to multiply 15 by to get 22, we can just figure out what it is by doing 22 divided by 15. Now, just for simplicity, we can write that as a fraction. It's 22 over 15. So that's what we multiply this by to get this. 15 times 22 over 15 gets me 22. And the pattern is the same on the top, so we multiply 12 by 22 over 15, and we end up with x. So you can do that in your calculator. 12 times 22 divided by 15, and you get your answer for x which is 17.6. So that's one method, is the method of comparison. If you go down your page, you can find the next method, isolation. So what I mean by isolation is getting the variable completely on its own. The variable is the number we want to solve. And how do we isolate it? Well, we need to get whatever's on the same side on the other side. So in order to do that, we have to do the opposite operations. So if x is being divided by 22, we want the 22 to get moved to the other side, we have to do the opposite. So what's the opposite of dividing by 22? It's multiplying by 22. So x is equal to 12 over 15 times 22. So you can do that in your calculator, 12 divided by 15 times 22, and you end up with your answer of 17.6. Now this is the same proportion that we just solved by comparison, so we got the same answer, which is, which is good. We know we did it right. We got the same answer both ways that we solved it. This next proportion, we're going to solve using isolation again, but notice this time x is on the bottom. So you don't want to multiply both sides by 17. That's not going to work. So isolation, what I did over here, only really works when the variable is on the top. So we can just change this. We can, we can flip this fraction around and flip this fraction around. As long as we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, then it's still equal. We can still work with it. So we end up with 84 over 2 equals x over 17. Now we can do what we did before and just multiply by 17. So x is equal to 84 divided by 2 times 17. If you do that in your calculator, you end up with 
714. Now, a lot of people don't really like solving with isolation because, yeah, it's really easy when the, when the unknown, when your variable is on the top of the fraction, but if the variable is on the bottom of the fraction, a lot of people get messed up here and they forget to flip the fractions around so that it's on the top and then they end up getting the wrong answer. So what most people prefer, and this is what I usually do, is cross multiplication. So in cross multiplication, well it's called cross multiplication because you multiply across the diagonal. So you multiply those two numbers and then you just divide by the one left over. So in this case, x is equal to 12 times 22 divided by 15. So if you type that into your calculator, you'll end up with your answer of 17.6. So using cross multiplication or isolation or comparison, we get the same answer for this proportion no matter what we do. For this last one, we don't need to flip the fractions around. We can just do cross multiplication like we did before. Multiply the diagonals, divide by the number left over. So in this case, x is equal to 17 times 84 divided by 2. And we end up with our answer of 714. Now this is the same proportion that we had uh, right above on your page, and we got the same answer except we didn't have to flip the fractions around. So a lot of people prefer cross multiplication because it doesn't matter if the unknown is on the top or on the bottom. You always just multiply the diagonal numbers and divide by the one left over. So solving proportions is an important skill and you'll see that we will use this quite a bit as we move through the, the lessons in this course. Um, especially in trigonometry, we'll be using this skill a lot. So flip the page over and we'll continue. So on the back of the page I've got some word problems so we can practice using proportions to solve problems. A boy who is 95 centimeters tall casts a shadow that is 220 centimeters long. His dad's shadow at the same time is 452 centimeters long. How tall is his dad? So if you read through the question, you'll notice there's a comparison. There's a ratio between the height of the person and the length of their shadow. We know the boy's height and we know the boy's shadow length. We're told what the dad's shadow length is, but we don't know the dad's height. So we can set up a proportion, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm setting up a comparison between height in centimeters and the shadow length in centimeters. Now I write it out to show my thinking, and this also helps me stay organized so that I, I keep the height on the top always and the shadow length on the bottom always. So I'm not uh, putting the boy's height here, but the dad's height down here. That would, that would be a mismatch. We need to keep the order the same for both fractions. So I'm told that the boy's height is 95 centimeters and his shadow length is 220 centimeters. The dad's height is unknown, so I've labeled it as X. The dad's shadow length is 452 centimeters. Now these two ratios comparison of the person's height with their shadow length are the same. They're equal to each other because this is happening at the same time. So the sun is casting a shadow at the same time. So it's at the same angle. The ratio between height and shadow length is going to be the same for each person. Now that we've set up our proportion, the hard part of this question is done. Now we want to know the dad's height. So we're just going to do what we did before. And I'm going to choose the method of cross multiplication. So I'll multiply 95 times 452 and divide by 220. So I end up with my answer. The dad is approximately 195.2 centimeters tall. So if you have a word problem, if the question is a description of a situation, 
you want to end with your own description of your answer in a sentence. That's proper communication. Let's move on to the next example. Bronze is made by mixing copper and tin in the ratio of 22 to 3. I'm going to stop there for a second. What does this mean? It means for every 22 parts of copper, there are 3 parts tin. A sculpture made out of bronze weighs 95 kilograms. How much of this weight is copper? Okay, so we need to understand what we're doing here. There's, there's a comparison. There's a ratio of copper to tin, and that's 22 to 3. So I'll write that down. But we're asked, how much of this weight? Well, what weight? This weight. This is the total weight of the whole sculpture. This isn't saying that there's 95 kilograms of copper or 95 kilograms of tin. It's saying the whole thing weighs 95 kilograms. So this ratio where we separate the copper and the tin doesn't really work with this weight that we're given. So this is the total weight, and we want to know how much of the weight is copper. So we need a ratio that compares copper to the total weight not copper to tin. So how do we figure out what numbers go in this ratio? Well, if there's 22 parts copper, we can keep that the same for the parts of copper. 22 parts copper and 3 parts tin, how many total parts are there? Well, 22 plus 3. There's 25 parts total, so total would be 25. So this is the ratio that we want to use, a comparison of copper to the total amount. Okay, so the ratio of copper to total is 22 to 25. Now, the sculpture weighs 95 kilograms. That's the total weight. And we want to know how much weight is copper. So our unknown, x, is the amount of copper. Now that we have our proportion, the hard part's over, all we need to do is solve the proportion, and we'll get our answer. To solve for x, we multiply the diagonals, 22 times 95, divide by the number left over, which is 25. So x equals 22 times 95, divided by 25, and that gets us an answer of 83.6. So there are 83.6 kilograms of copper in the sculpture. So hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be comfortable with creating and solving proportions. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll do my best to help. Otherwise, move on to the practice questions.